Truth and untruth often coexist, good and evil often are found together. You cannot cure a lesser evil by a greater evil. It is my conviction that the root of evil is the want of a living God. He who has a living faith in God will not do evil deeds with name of God on his lips. In a strictly scientific sense, God is at the bottom of both good and evil. My jita tells me that evil can never result from a good action. Non-cooperation with evil is as much a duty as is cooperation with good. I object to violence because when it appears to do good, the good is only temporary, the evil it does is permanent. The most heinous and the most cruel crimes of which history has record have been committed under the cover of religion or equally noble motives. A good person will resist an evil system with his whole soul. Disobedience of the laws of an evil state is therefore a duty. War is an unmitigated evil. But it certainly does one good thing. It drives away fear and brings bravery to the surface. Nonviolence implies voluntary submission to the penalty for non-cooperation with evil. Tolerance obviously does not disturb the distinction between right and wrong, or good and evil. Man's nature is not essentially evil. Brute nature has been no to yield to the influence of love. You must never despair of human nature. When I despair, I remember that all through history the way of truth and love has always won. There have been tyrants and murderers and for a time they seem invincible, but in the end, they always fall, think of it, always. I call God long-suffering and patient precisely because he permits evil in the world. I know that he has no evil in him and yet if there is evil, he is the author of it and yet untouched by it. Of all the evils for which man has made himself responsible, none is so degrading, so shocking, or so brutal as his abuse of the better half of humanity. To me, the female sex is not the weaker sex.